the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. God invites us to come into his presence and worship him with humble and penitent hearts. Therefore, let us acknowledge our sinfulness and ask him to forgive us. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this, I deserve your punishment both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins, and trusting in my Savior Jesus Christ, I pray, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given his only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. For all that we need in life, and for the wisdom to use all your gifts with gratitude and joy, hear our prayer, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the steadfast assurance that nothing can separate us from your love, and for the courage to stand firm against the assaults of Satan and every evil, hear our prayer, O Christ. Christ, have mercy. For the well-being of your holy church in all the world, and for those who offer here their worship and praise, hear our prayer, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Merciful God, maker and preserver of life, uphold us by your power and keep us in your tender care. Amen. The works of the Lord are great and glorious. His name is worthy of praise. O oh Lord, our Lord, how glorious is your name in all the earth. Almighty God, merciful Father, you crown our life with your love. You take away our sin, you comfort our spirit, you make us pure and holy in your sight. You did not spare your only Son, but gave him up for us all. O Lord, our Lord, how glorious is your name in all the earth. O Son of God, eternal word of the Father, you came to live with us. You made your Father known. You washed us from our sins in your own blood. You are the King of glory. You are the Lord. O oh Lord, our Lord, how glorious is your name in all the earth. Let us pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, your mercies are new every morning, and though we deserve only punishment, you receive us as your children and provide for all our needs of body and soul. Grant that we may heartily acknowledge your merciful goodness, give thanks for all your benefits, and serve you in willing obedience. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for this morning's readings.
I invite you to follow along on your bulletin inserts as we take in the portions of God's Word for this fourth Sunday in Lent. Our first lesson is taken from the book of the prophet Isaiah. We read chapter 12, verses 1 through 6. This also serves as our sermon text for this morning. In that day you will say, I will give thanks to you, Lord. For though you were angry with me, your anger has turned away and you comfort me. Surely God is my salvation. I will trust him and will not be afraid because Yah, the Lord, is my strength and song and he has become my salvation. Therefore, with joy, you will draw water from the wells of salvation. In that day, you will say, give thanks to the Lord, proclaim his name, declare among the peoples what he has done. Proclaim that his name is exalted. Sing to the Lord, for he has done amazing things. Let this be known in all the earth. Shout aloud and sing for joy, daughter of Zion, for the Holy One of Israel is great among you. This is the word of our Lord. If, if you would turn to page 78 in the front of your hymnals, we begin with the singing in unison of our psalmody for this morning, Psalm number 32. are forgiven, whose sins are covered. When I kept silent, your hand was heavy upon me. My strength was sapped as in the heat of summer. Then I acknowledged my sin to you and did not cover up my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the guilt of my sin. Remember your mercy, O Lord. Remember your mercy and love. You are my hiding place. You will protect me from trouble. Many are the woes of the wicked, but the Lord's unfailing love surrounds those who trust in him. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Remember your mercy, O Lord. Remember your mercy and love. Our second lesson for this morning is taken from Paul's letter to the church in Rome. We read chapter 8, verses 1 through 10. If someone operates under the control of the law, there's only frustration and condemnation. So we hear something so much better from our Lord and his inspired apostle. 
So then, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For in Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit of life set me free from the law of sin and death. Indeed, what the law was unable to do because it was weakened by the flesh, God did when he sent his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh to deal with sin. God condemned sin in his flesh so that the righteous decree of the law would be fully satisfied in us who are not walking according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. To be sure, those who are in harmony with the sinful flesh think about things the way the sinful flesh does, and those in harmony with the Spirit think about things the way the Spirit does. Now, the way the sinful flesh thinks results in death. But the way the Spirit thinks results in life and peace. For the mindset of the sinful flesh is hostile to God, since it does not submit to God's law, and in fact, it cannot. Those who are in the sinful flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the sinful flesh, but in the Spirit, if indeed God's Spirit lives in you. And if someone does not have the Spirit of Christ, that person does not belong to Christ. But if Christ is in you, your body is dead because of sin, but your spirit is alive because of righteousness. This is the word of our Lord. There is rejoicing in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Please rise for the reading of this morning's gospel lesson. The Holy Gospel for this day is recorded in St. Luke's account. We read chapter 15, verses 1 through 3 and 11 through 32 in Jesus' name. All the tax collectors and sinners were coming to Jesus to hear him. But the Pharisees and the experts in the law were complaining, This man welcomes sinners and eats with them. He told them this parable. A certain man had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me my share of the estate. So he divided his property between them. Not many days later, the younger son gathered together all that he had and traveled to a distant country. There he wasted his wealth with reckless living. After he had spent everything, there was a severe famine in that country, and he began to be in need. He went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country, who sent him into his fields to feed pigs. He would have liked to fill his stomach with the carob pods that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. When he came to his senses, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have more than enough bread, and I am dying from hunger? I will get up, go to my father, and tell him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. He got up and went to his father. While he was still far away, his father saw him and was filled with compassion. He ran, hugged his son, and kissed him. The son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Quick, bring out the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fattened calf and kill it. Let us eat and celebrate, because this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. Then they began to celebrate. His older son was in the field. As he approached the house, he heard music and dancing. He called one of the servants and asked him what was going on. The servant told him, Your brother is here. Your father killed the fattened calf because he has received him back safe and sound. The older brother was angry and refused to go in. His father came out and began to plead with him. He answered his father, Look, these many years I've been serving you, and I never disobeyed your command. But you never gave me even a young goat so that I could celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours arrived after wasting his property with prostitutes, you killed the fattened calf for him. The father said to him, Son, you are always with me, and all that I have is yours. But it was fitting to celebrate and be glad, because this brother of yours was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise 
be to you, O Christ. The congregation may be seated. We continue with the singing of our hymn of the day, hymn 379, Amazing Grace, How Sweet the Sound. May the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be yours as we hear and meditate upon his holy word. Amen. As I mentioned, our text for today is the 12th chapter of Isaiah. We again hear the introductory verse. In that day you will say, I will give thanks to you, Lord. For though you were angry with me, your anger has turned away and you comfort me. Heavenly Father, Through your word of truth, sanctify us as a people delivered from condemnation to yourself to be your own forever. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, if you were to make a movie or write a story about the history of God and mankind, what kind would it be? If you look, you look online, you, you see uh, sites for movie buffs, and they talk about all the different genres or all the different types of movies. Comedies, thrillers, horror, sci-fi. Would it be a drama that you would write? Would it be a thriller that you would produce? Would it be an action movie? And... Doing so, making this movie or this book, you would have to determine who the villain is, who are the oppressed, and who's the hero. And a question question that would run through your process would be, what does grace have to do with it? When you take a look at, at the history of God and mankind, you recognize that there was a falling out, wasn't there? 
And there are people who want to blame God and say, well, he's the villain. But we know better than that. When God finished his days of creation, he looked at everything he had made and he said, it is exceedingly perfect. And then we have Satan coming into the garden to tempt Adam and Eve to disobey God, to twist their will against the God of all creation. And he succeeded. And mankind fell into sin, and sin was inherited by all the people since. Sins inherited, sins of act, word and deed. Thought sins, everything coming from the heart. Who's the villain? Well, we would have to say Satan is the villain. And who are the oppressed? It would be all mankind, wouldn't it? God has a standard. He is a holy and just God, and he says, if you come into my heaven, you have to have perfect righteousness and a total lack of sin. And he says, I hate sin. And so all of mankind in that position of being condemned, living under the guilt of sin, living with that knowledge that there was judgment coming. Who's going to be the hero? In some movies, in some movies, uh, people are suffering and, and they band together and they, and they end up fighting against the monster or fighting against the villain themselves and winning the day. But when you look at us and and hear what we just confessed, that, that we are sinful and that we cannot, cannot do what is pleasing in God's sight on our own. You realize that we could never be our own heroes in this true tale. Sometimes in a movie, a person caught up in circumstances is thrust into the center and, and ends up being the hero by necessity and they rise up and win the victory. But there's never been a sinful human being who has been able to rise up and do anything like that, has there? We take a look at our text, and we recognize that Isaiah is looking ahead. He's, he's kind of comparing the first exodus when God sent Moses to bring the children of Israel out of Egypt, out from under that, that enslavement and set them free to what will come in the future. He says, in that day, you will say, I will give thanks to you, Lord, for though you were angry with me, your anger has turned away and you comfort me. Isaiah is helping us to see who the hero is. It's God himself, isn't it? God is not only the one who created us. He's also the one who knew we would need to be saved. And God the Father sent God the Son to do that exact thing for us. In the earlier chapters in Isaiah, he hints at that. In chapter 7, he talks about the virgin conceiving and giving birth to a son, and you will call him Emmanuel, and that word means God with us. In chapter 9, he expands on that, and he talks about the righteous branch who was coming to save. And in chapter 15, he expands further on who Emmanuel is, that he is going to be the son from the branch of Jesse, from the royal line of, of King David. The Savior's coming. The hero is on the way, Isaiah says. And in that day, when he, when he comes and carries out his saving work, when he defeats sin, death, and hell for us, Isaiah says, in that day, here's what you will do. You will say, surely God is my salvation. I will trust him. 
and not be afraid. Because Yah, the Lord, you've got that Yahweh is the full name, the Lord, I am that I am. Uh, you've got Yah and Yahweh side by side, and so the translators use that Hebrew word first, and then uh, what we commonly call him as that God of free and faithful grace. Because Yah the Lord is my strength and song, and he has become my salvation. That is an echo of the song that Miriam and the Israelites sang at the Red Sea after the Lord had brought the waters down upon the Egyptian armies and delivered the children of Israel. God is my salvation, I will sing to him. And Isaiah says, the day comes when we will sing that song too. When is that day? For the children of Israel, it was after 400 some years of slavery, and they were all brought out at the same time. For us, ever since the Lord rose, the Spirit has been calling people to trust in him, has been calling people out of the deadness of unbelief into life, spiritual life, by bringing them to faith. And as each person is delivered from the bondage of sin, death, and hell to life eternal as they become a member of the Holy Christian Church, that body of all true believers, we begin to sing. We have reason, as we recognize who our Savior is, to do great things. We have Isaiah talking about the fact that God acted in a gracious way toward us. There was nothing that we earned, nothing that we could. God did it all. We didn't deserve it, but in love, he gained this all for us. And that grace moves us. His mighty act on our behalf moves us both to live a life of thanks and to speak of him to others. Isaiah says, In that day you will say, Give thanks to the Lord, proclaim his name, declare among the peoples what he has done, proclaim that his name is exalted. Sing to the Lord, for he has done amazing things. Let this be known in all the earth. Shout aloud and sing for joy, daughter of Zion, for the Holy One of Israel is great among you. Just as the children of Israel sang God's praises on the shore of the sea, Christians are called upon to recognize the God of all grace and faithfulness, who in love sent his one and only Son to be our Savior, and, and live without fear. We have... We have in verse 3 that statement, Therefore with joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. No more fear. Because our Lord has done it all for us. Condemnation? Gone. Replaced with God's invitation. Just as you heard in Jesus' parable, the Father always looking for the Son to repent and return. And God is always looking toward us, come to me. I have salvation for you. And he calls us through his Holy Spirit. And he takes away our fear, knowing that all has been made right between us and him by his Son. Life without fear. A life filled with joy, knowing what we have in Christ, here in life and in eternity with him. And so he invites us and the Holy Spirit moves us, and we do praise Him, not only as we gather here together, but in the world. And we do proclaim Him through evangelism, through missions, through, through personal contacts as we live our life. He is our great God and Savior. And God invites us to continue that praise until He takes us to be with Him forever in heaven. What a movie! What a story, a true tale of such importance. And again, that question, what has grace got to do with it? 
No, recognizing our unworthiness and how God acted in love toward us, grace has everything to do with it, doesn't it? And that is what fills us with joy and takes away our fear, God's grace toward us. That is what moves us to live lives of thanks today and to look forward to an eternal life with him in heaven, his grace. I pray that his grace and the knowledge of it lifts you up each day as you walk through this world toward heaven with him. Amen. Please rise. Now the peace of God which surpasses all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. We continue with our confession of faith. We make use of the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became fully human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We pray. Dear God, Heavenly Father, how great is your love for us. You willingly sent your beloved Son to a world of sinful rebels. The innocent one came to serve the guilty, but his own people rejected him, and his enemies tortured him and put him to death. Because you did not withhold your one and only Son, but let him take our guilt on himself to set us free, we praise your holy name. Dear Son of God, our brother, how great is your love for us. You allowed yourself to be condemned so that we could be declared not guilty. Fill our hearts with the same self-sacrificing love that you showed us. You allowed no suffering, no fear, and no doubt to swerve you from your path to Calvary. Give us the same single-minded dedication and unshakable commitment as we daily take up our cross and follow you. Dear Holy Spirit, how great is your love for us. By word and sacrament, you have warmed and transformed our foolish and stubborn hearts, making us wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus and receptive to his gospel of forgiveness. Hold his cross before our eyes that we may dedicate our lives to him who died for us. Make us strong in the hour of temptation. Lead us to love and serve our neighbor as unselfishly as Christ did. Lord God, in this world of darkness and evil, the light of your saving gospel continues to shine. Through that good news, you have brought people around the world from the darkness of sin and death into your marvelous light. But evil exists, and Satan's work in this fallen world continues. As many in Ukraine are experiencing unimaginable hardships and suffering, we ask that you would be with them, protect them, Provide for them, and above all, strengthen their faith and trust in you and your promises. We commend them to your gracious care, knowing that you have promised to be with them always. Even though they are now walking through the shadow of death, enable them to fear no evil. We ask you, in your love and wisdom, to restore peace and safety to those now enduring the horrors of war and bloodshed 
and to continue to let your gospel message be the comfort and hope that so many desperately need. In Jesus' name we pray. Hear us, Lord, as we bring you our private petitions. Keep us in the true faith, in unity with all faithful Christians, and grant us a blessed death. Hear us for Jesus' sake. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We continue with the sacrament on page 33. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Praise to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In love he has blessed us with every spiritual blessing. He made his Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not only for ours, but also for the sins of the whole world. Now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ. To him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb be praise and thanks and honor and glory forever and ever. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of your glory. You are my God and I will exalt you. I will give you thanks for you have become my salvation. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of your glory. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Oh, Christ, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Oh, Christ, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Grant us your peace. congregation may be seated. Those who are prepared to commune will be ushered forward. Our distribution hymn for, to for today is hymn 317.
on what he has done. Let all who seek the Lord rejoice and proudly bear his name. He renews his promises and leads his people forth in joy. With shouts of thanksgiving, Alleluia, Alleluia. Hear the prayer of your people, O Lord, that the lips which have praised you here may glorify you in the world, that the eyes which have seen the coming of your Son may long for his coming again and that all who have received in his true body and blood the pledge of your forgiveness may be restored to live a new and holy life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, go in peace. Live in harmony with one another. Serve the Lord with gladness. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. 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 The congregation may be seated. Uh, We join in the singing of our closing hymn. We sing verses... 1, 4, and 5 of hymn 111, Sweet the Moments, Rich in Blessing. Good morning. morning. Glad you could be with us this morning. Uh, We have uh, our regular schedule for this week. Uh, This Wednesday, Pastor Cars will be preaching at St. Paul's. And then uh, that last Wednesday in Lent, I will be preaching out here again, and we will be approaching Holy Week. Uh, We have our calendars for the month in the back. Please take one of those with you as you go. Uh, There is a note, I think it's maybe the first Wednesday of the month, Uh, catechism class didn't get included in there, but we will be having catechism class that Wednesday. Uh, Everything else is, is set for our schedule for this week. God bless your day and your week.